Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Fatma Vera. Today we're gonna talk about the Disabled Soldier by Oliver Goldsmith. Uh, due to the story being only five pages long and its straightforward nature, there is no proper analysis of this story, and you won't find any relevant sources about it on the internet. Let's begin with the story. He was born in Shropshire. His father was a laborer and died when he was five years old. And looks at that. So I was put upon the parish. As he had been a wandering sort of a man, the parishioners were not able to tell to what parish I belonged or where I was born, so they sent me to another parish, and that parish sent me to a third. I told in my heart they kept sending me about so long that they would not let me be born in any parish at all, but at last, however, they fixed me. Very sad. I had some disposition to be a scholar and was resolved at least to know my letters. The second important event, but the master of the workhouse put me to business as soon as I was able to handle a mallet and I here lived an easy kind of life for five years. I only worked ten hours in the day and had my meat and drink provided for my labor. It is true, I was not suffered to steer out of the house for fear, as they said, I should run away. But what of that? I had the liberty of the whole house and the yard before the door, and that was enough for me. I was then bound out to a farmer where I was up both early and late, but I ate and drank well and liked my business well enough till he died when I was obligated to provide for myself, so I was resolved to go seek my fortune. In this manner, I went from town to town, worked when I could get employment and starved when I could get none, when happening one day to go through a fight belonging to a justice of peace. I spied the hair crossing the patches before me, and I believe the devil put it my into my head to fling my stick at it. Well, what will you have on it? I killed the hair and was bringing away. When the justice himself met me, he called me a poacher and a villain, and choleric me, desired I would give an account of myself. I fell upon my knees, begged his worship's pardon, and began to give a full account of all that I knew of my preceding generation. But though I gave a very true account, the justice said I could give no account, so I was indicated at the seasons found guilty of being poor and sent up to London to Newgate in order to be transported as a witch bond. People may say this and that of being in jail, but for my part, I found Newgate as agreeable as place as ever I was in my life. I had my belly full to eat and drink and did no work at all. This kind of life was too good to last forever. He was happy for being in jail, because enough for him to be not hungry, to be not sleepy or thirsty. Just enough for him. He was so happy. When my time was expired, I worked my passage home and glad I was to see old England again because I loved my country. I was afraid, however, that I should be indicated for a wage one once more, so I did not much care to go down into the country, but kept about the town and did little jobs and when I could get them. I was very happy in this manner for some time till one evening coming home from work, two men knocked me door, knocked me down and then desired me to stand. They belonged to a press gang. I was carried before the justice and as I could give no account of myself, I had my choice left. Whether to go on board a man of war or list for a soldier, I chose the latter and in this post of a gentleman, I served two campaigns in Flanders, was at the battles of Wall and Fontenay, and received but one bone to the breast here, but the doctor of our regiment soon made me well again. Our crew was carried into Brest, and many of them died because they were not used to live in a jail, but for my part, it was nothing to me, for I was seasoned. One night, 
as I was asleep on the bed of boards with a firm blanket about me, for I always loved to lie well, I was awakened by the boat swain who had a dark lantern in his hand. Warm blanket enough for him. That's all. Did you see that? Jack says he to me, will you knock out the French ten trees brains? I don't care, says I, striving to keep myself awake. If I lend a hand, then follow me, says he, and I hope we shall do business. Three days before we were taken up by the Dorset privates, who were glad of so many good hands, and we consented to run our chains. In three days we fell in with the Pompeider privateer and four forty guns, while we had but twenty-three, so to it we went yard arm. The fight last three hours, and I verily believe we would we should have taken the Frenchmen had we but had some more men left behind. But unfortunately we lost all our men just as we were going to get the victory. Very sad. And then he lost four fingers of the left hand and his leg was shot off. And it's important what he said. One man is born with a silver spoon in his mouth and another with a wooden weight. However, blessed be God, I enjoy good health and will forever love liberty and old England. Liberty, property and old England forever. That's all guys. Let's look at the characters. The main character is the soldier and Jack and Privateer, the Dorset Privateer and Pompeiter Privateer, a Frenchman and two men who the soldiers home door knocked. That's all. It actually did. Uh, that isn't so much important. The main character is the soldier. The disabled soldier a beggar whose life has been one misery after another, one leg shot off and four fingers of his left hand, unrelieved by any good fortune, but he takes great satisfaction in the little comforts of life, especially that he still lives, can eat and sleep and drink, etc., even if he has to beg for blood, and he comforts of life, um... I mean, uh, he lost England, yes. The saying he limped off, uh, leaving me in admiration at his interpretity and content. And also he says at the final, liberty, property and old England forever. First of all, the master of workhouse, yes. Put him in business, handle a mallet, and he lived there for five years. And then the soldier became a form farmer, but one day someone who called him as a poacher and he sent up to London Newgate. After his uh, time expired, two men knocked his door and then desired him to stand. He whether go to on a board a man of war or list for a soldier. He chose the leather end of a gentleman. He served two campaigns in Flanders, was at the battles of Wall and Fontaine. He always belonged to a justice of peace. His uh, crew was carried into Brest. Many of them died. Jack says to him, let's kill these French. And then they are taken by Dorset private. They fight with privateers against the French. And the fight lost three hours while he assumed killed the old Frenchman, some more men left behind and they lost their old men unfortunately. Okay guys, what's the moral in the story? As you can see, um, the man has always been unlucky, experiencing many hardships for him. Uh, from a young age, his father passed away when he was only five years old, and since then he has been drifting from place to place, forced to work and serve in others. However, no matter what happens, 
Even after losing his finger and leg, he was never unhappy. This was because he realized that there were people in much worse situation than him and believed that he um, should be grateful to God for being able to perform simple tasks like eating, drinking, and sleeping. Um, as a result, the man has always found something to be happy about and grateful. So, the moral is, be grateful for life. If we can eat, if we are free, if we can drink and sleep, we should say hallelujah. Always we remember, we are better situation than someone. And at the end of the story, let's remember... The soldier says property, liberty, and old England forever. That's all guys. Thanks for listening. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.